In this example video, we're gonna look at exercise 5-6, where we're gonna to put together the journal entries and put them into the revenue journal. Remember, what goes into our revenue journal is any time we've provided a service to our customer on account. So they tell us that the Horizon Consulting Company had the following transactions during the month of October. Notice that every one of these transactions start with issued invoice. Anytime you see that phrase of issued invoice, we know that it's done a service on account, which means it has to go into our revenue journal. When we're issuing an invoice, that means that we are sending our customer a bill for them to pay us for something that we've done for them. So when we look at our revenue journal, What's going to be really important when you're utilizing the special journals is pay attention to your headings. So our rules about journalizing really aren't changing. We still have to have two accounts involved. Our debits and credits still have to equal. We're just putting it into a different format. So we have October 2nd is our date. The invoice number they told us was 321, and it says to the prior corporation for services rendered, rendered meanings provided, on account for $595. So we go over to this column and we put in our $595. Notice we don't have two columns. We don't have a debit column and a credit column here. It's all falling into one column. The reason for that is every single transaction that's going to be recorded in our revenue journal is going to affect the same two accounts. It's going to increase accounts receivable, which we know is an asset account, so it's going to increase with the debit and it's going to increase our revenue account, which is fees earned, and we know that that increases with the credit. So my debits and credits still equal by simply entering in that one value into that column, because that means we're debiting accounts receivable for $595, and we're crediting fees earned for $595. So go back over here under the column where it says account debited. So we know out of the two accounts that are which one is being debited. It's accounts receivable. So this is asking us which accounts receivable is being debited. We now have subsidiary ledgers. We want to make it specific of who owes us $595. And in this case, it's the prior corporation. So we would type in prior corp. Every transaction that gets recorded into the revenue journal has to be posted to the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. This exercise is not asking us to do that, but if you had to, you would then put a check mark in the post reference column to indicate that you have posted that transaction to prior corporations accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. I don't have an account number to put in there because our subsidiary ledgers are not given account numbers. They're simply done and indicated by the company name. So we would put a check mark there to indicate that it got posted to the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. On October 3rd, they tell us that we've issued invoice 322 to Armor Inc. for services rendered on account for $310. So again, $310, we've now made our debits and credits equal. We're debiting accounts receivable. We're crediting fees earned for $310. And whose accounts receivable is being debited is Armor Inc. On the 14th, we issued invoice number 323, again to prior corporation for services rendered on account for $205. So it goes into our one column that's affecting two accounts for $205. And again, prior corporation is going to be affected. On the 24th, we issued invoice 324 to Rose Company for services rendered on account for $850. So whose accounts receivable is being debited? It's Rose Company's accounts receivable that is in fact being debited. On the 29th, it says we've collected invoice number 321 from prior corporation. It still says it invoice number, but it doesn't say that we've issued an invoice. It says we've collected that amount. So remember, any time that we are collecting cash or any time cash is coming into our business, it does not go into our revenue journal. It goes into our cash receipts journal. So that transaction would not be recorded in our revenue journal because we recorded 
that transaction when we've provided the service on account, we've earned the revenue, that goes into our revenue journal, but when we collect the cash, that would go into our cash receipts journal. So at the end of the month on October 31st, we would total up how much in services we've provided on account. So in this case, we've provided $1,960. Remember, on the date of each transaction, we would have gone into the subsidiary ledger for each one of those customers and posted the increases to those subsidiary, subsidiary ledger accounts. At the end of the month, we only posted the general ledger in total for any column that has a specific account name at top. So that means we would go to the accounts receivable general ledger account and we would debit the account for a total of $1,960. We then go to the fees earned account in the general ledger and post a credit for $1,960 in total. We don't put all the detail anymore in the general ledger. All that detail is now in our subsidiary ledgers. And once we did the postings to those two accounts, Below, we would indicate the account numbers. So we posted to account number 12, which would be accounts receivable, and we posted that account number to account number 41, which would have been our fees earned account.